God deserves all the praise and all the worship that you can give them. Hallelujah. Come on, you ought to lift your hands where you are and sing along with the same. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, it does, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Join me, say my hallelujah, say. Say, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs, to you. belongs to you. Oh, say, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs, belongs to you. To yes, it does. You. Oh, nobody else deserves this praise and this worship. My hallelujah it belongs, belongs to, you. to you. Oh, say, you deserve it. your hands where you are and from the bottom of your heart tell him he deserves all the worship you can give him one more time say you deserve it Say it. 
All of the glory, all of the glory to you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. There is no one like you, Jesus. All of the glory, it belongs to you. Oh, say you deserve it. Come on, sing it with me. Praise seem like a song. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Good morning, New St. Bethel. We do want to say happy Women's Sunday. Today is our Women's Day, so we appreciate all the women of New St. Bethel. Thank you for being online with us today. We also thank all of our visitors, all of our guests who this may be their first time seeing us online. We do appreciate you tuning in with us. Uh, we're excited to say next Sunday is our homecoming Sunday. We are back in live service June 6th at 10 45 a.m. We are back in service and we're really excited about it. Not service in the, the old way, service in a new way. We're going to take it up to a new level. We're working with the band. We're working with the singers. We're working to elevate the service to make it a higher energy, higher spirit field and anointed service. Amen. So we, we ask that you do come out. We expect a crowd to come. 1045, we ask that you wear your mask. Masks are required. But if you're feeling comfortable, still come out and worship with us. Also, we're um, still going to be online. We're still going to stream on Facebook. We're going to stream live on Facebook and YouTube. So if you'd like to, go ahead and tune in with us if you're uncomfortable with coming in, but you say, hey, I can watch from the house. I can support from the house. We, we would like that uh, as well. But we want you in the house next Sunday, 1045. We would love to see you here. Now, we're going into the Word of God. I'm, I'm in the book of Luke the book of Luke, and, and we're reading the parable of the prodigal son, Luke, the 15th chapter, and um, we're going to begin at, uh, I'm only going to read a few verses, beginning at, um, looks like verse 22, verse 22, it says, but his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. 
and kill the calf we have been fattening, we must celebrate with a feast. Verse 24, for this son of mine was dead and now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So let the party begin. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, today we lift your name up high. We ask that you anoint our heads with oil that you may allow us to see and hear exactly what it is that you want us to hear. We ask that you guide us in the right direction as to where we need to go not necessarily where we want to go but where it is that you desire for us to go God we ask that you open our eyes to be able to see those who are not for us God and 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 those things those first people places and things that are not for us that that won't help us enhance our journey but that the people places and things that will draw us closer unto you we ask that you help us to uh, trust you better. Um, we ask you bind any spirits contrary to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Giving honor to God. Giving honor to the pastor and to all the ministers and the mothers and the ladies and the men and the deacons and the deaconesses. To all honor is due. It's once again a privilege to be here today. And I, you know my motto. Get in, get out, and get ahead. I don't plan on being before you long. I just want to um, go over uh, what the Lord has shown me through this prodigal son parable. Um, and it is entitled, I Just Want to Go Home. I Just Want to Go Home. I began to analyze the text from multiple perspectives. The first, beginning with the son, the son, the son, his perspective. See, there was... Uh, in the verses uh, between the verses of 12 and 14 you find there there was a release there was a release there was a release he was frustrated he was frustrated in the position that he's he was in have you ever been frustrated in a position that you were in uh, maybe it's your job you're frustrated in your job and you just want to get up out of there um, you, you're frustrated with your home life or you're frustrated with uh, your family members, whatever it may be. He was in a frustrating situation, and he, he, he was ready to move on. He was ready to go to the, his next level or what he believed was the right time uh, to go to his, what God had for him or his destiny. Uh, there was a release between verses 12 and 14. Between the verses of 17 and 19, we find that there was a revelation. He, he, he received a revelation. The Bible says he came to his senses. Um, he, he, he began to understand the gravity of his circumstance and situation. And then in verses 20 through 24, we find that there was repentance so first it was a release of a revelation, and then there was repentance. That's from the son's perspective. Now, if we look at it from the father's perspective, our second perspective, we find out that the father, between 12 and 14, he watched. He watched. He watched his son. He watched his son. Uh, he didn't try to stop him. He watched him. He just paid a close attention to him. Uh, I, I'm assuming that he watched him because he had been in his circumstances before. He had seen this before. He had been young before. He understood, you know, through maturity and wisdom, he understood what he might be going through. And he allowed him, my dad said, you allow him enough change just to get far enough. You got to allow him to go out sometimes and, and, and to, to test the water. So he allowed him. He just watched. He didn't stop him. He just watched between 17 and 19. We find out he waited. When you get an opportunity, I need you to read verses 11 all the way to the end. Verses of Luke 15, 11 all the way down so that you can get a real good grasp of the story. He, he waited in between verses 17 and 19. He waited. He didn't do nothing. He watched and he waited. He waited patiently. And then we find out in verses 20 through 24, that he welcomed him. He welcomed him. So he watched, he waited, then he welcomed. That's from 
the father's perspective. We already went over the sons, which is to, he released, uh, he was released. There was a revelation and then there was repentance. Then the father, he watched, he waited, then he welcomed. Lastly, there's the overall perspective uh, that people say there's your truth, his truth, and then there's the real truth. And it, this is the overall perspective of the situation. We find out he sinned between the verses of 12 and 14. He sinned. Between the verses of 17 and 19, he got his senses. First he sinned, then he got to his senses. So he got it together. And then verses 20 through 24, then he received his salvation. He received his salvation. I could go real far into the story about inheritance, uh, but I won't go that far. Long story short, I'll cut across the field. The son requested his inheritance early. He wanted his inheritance early. Being the baby boy, that means he gets a third, and his big brother gets two thirds. Um, he got a third uh, he got his inheritance from his father, and he and he went out and he squandered it. He squandered it. He went and lived a, a, a wild life. Yeah, we, we're going to find out later on in the story. Um, a, a few a few days ago, um, I was at the house chilling, relaxing, n- not doing much. My sons went over to their grandmother's house, and um, they were just hanging out. And my wife says, "Hey." I want to go get these cookies, and I know I like cookies, okay? I know I'm a little heavy, and I, 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 you could tell I like to eat some cookies here and there, especially chocolate chip when they're soft and gooey, amen? And I said, okay, cool, where are they at? And she said, Sister Chanel made them. Sister Chanel, uh, brother, brother uh, Veronica, Sister Veronica's uh, daughter and Brother Chris Gordon's daughter, um, she had made some cookies on our behalf and I know that she can really make some cookies now I don't know her Facebook but if you can ever get in contact with her she gonna hook you up for real for real she can cook I'm not even a big sweet eater but she can show enough make some good desserts so she she had the cookies at the house now the house from my house is probably like 10 11 12 miles away and um, I was like cool well I'm gonna throw my clothes on and we're going to shoot out to her house, which is pretty far away from my house. And, um, and, and we're going to hop in the car and we're going to bounce. My wife says to me, no, 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 no. I want to ride the Can-Am. Now, you got to understand something about my wife. She done bought this new toy. It's called a trike. It's called a Can-Am, but it's a trike. It's a three-wheel motorcycle. It got two in the front, one in the back. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, she decided she wanted to ride out there to Chanel's house to go pick up some cookies. I don't know about y'all, but she's adventurous, but I'm not that adventurous. Amen. I remember the last time I went on, I went on a trike. I was riding by myself. We rode through downtown, but it was the moment I got on the freeway that I began to encounter a problem. My problem was fear began to set in. I got scared. Why? Because I was going 65 miles an hour and I realized that I can not only touch the pavement, I can touch the car next to me and fear began to click in my head. Now my wife, however, it's like the faster she went, the more excited she became. She was going about 80, 90 miles an hour. I mean, she's hitting corners, up a hill, round the corner, round the bend. And me, on the other hand, I'm reserved. I'm kind of scared. So the, the, the further I got out, the slower I began to go. In fact, she got scared. She realized that I was nowhere to be found. She had sped off without me. She literally pulled over on the side of the freeway and waited for me because she thought something might have happened to me. I might have flew off the bike. Not knowing that all that happened was fear had to begin to set in. Now, fast forward to the other day. She has this trike now. And two people can ride on the trike. But here's the problem. My wife wants to drive. Uh-huh. See, when I was driving, it was a little different. But now that she wants to drive, I got a little problem. Here's the problem. The seat or the driver's seat has support, it's stable, it's secure, um, it, it's a safe position, it's a safe position. However, the passenger seat behind it, it's literally like me sitting on this desk and holding each side to keep myself on. It wasn't stable, it wasn't secure, I didn't feel safe, I didn't feel supported, it ain't got no backrest. So 
ultimately, I have to hold myself onto this tricycle while we going 70, 80 miles an hour. This presented a problem for me. So I have to start off slow. I hop on the back with her and I say, uh, well, let's, let's go. We're going we gonna to try this thing because I understand she wants, she wants to drive there and I drive back because she wants to have fun. I'm not knocking the hustle. My problem is, is when I have to give up control and allow you to take control of the wheel in our direction. We get down to the corner, not too, too far from my house, but... I told her straight up, listen, I'm scared. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm scared. This thing don't seem stable. I don't feel safe. I don't feel no support. And I don't feel secure. So I'm scared right now. And she said, well, I ain't taking you back. It's too late now. And I thought to myself, I just want to go home. I, I, I just want to go home. Have you ever been in that state in your life where you say, I just want to go home? We get, we get to the freeway. The ride through town wasn't that bad, but it was at the point we got to the freeway where I, where I was presented with a problem. I was now going, we're going 75, 78, 79 miles an hour, and I'm on the back of this board holding on for, I held so, so long that my hands began to become discolored because I was so scared. I wanted to close my eyes, but I could not close my eyes. The reason why is because there are t twists and turns on this freeway. And if I do not go along with the twists and turns, and if I'm stiff and I don't move with the shift, I could literally fly off this bike. So I had to see where we were going so that I can anticipate my where I needed to shift my weight. I told her straight up. She said, no, just if you're scared, just hold on to me. I said, girl, do you not realize that I will pull you off of this bike with me with all 200 and something pounds of myself? And we will both be on this ground rolling. My fear was not in itself the, the fear of, 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 of uh, falling off. That wasn't the fear. It's the fear of falling off and dying. It was the fear that if I fell off, I might survive getting hit by a car. And going through the trauma that was, was associated with it, I found myself in a premature predicament. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And, and you can ask Tanita. She'll tell you I was screaming when we entered the freeway. I'll tell you that I was just praying real loud. I, I, I was in this pre, premature predicament, and now I'm at a position where I'm holding on for dear life because I'm scared of where we're going. Can you be honest? There's been some situations in your life that you've been scared. You don't really know where you're going. You don't even know how you got into the situation, but now you're holding on for, for dear life. If we look at verse 13, keep your Bibles open if you can. Luke 15 and 13, and it says, a few days later, this younger son packed up all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money on wild living. Verse 14, about that time, his money ran out. A great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. In literally two sentences, he lost all his entire inheritance. Now, I can bet you that he was probably scared at about this point he was he probably got a little bit nervous because he went from living a high life to to living a terrible life what 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 I've learned is in my little bit of time is that what can be a blessing can become a curse if it received prematurely the the boy in reality received his inheritance a little too premature now now y'all know I like to eat and truth be told I really like chicken. I'm not no vegan or no vegetarian. I like to eat me some chicken. So here it is. Chicken can be fried, can be baked, can be grilled, can be put in a crock pot or boiled. I will still eat the chicken. But here's the thing. You got to keep that chicken in that grease in that oven in that crock pot long enough to ensure that it's cooked all the way through. Why? Because if it's not cooked long enough, what was meant to bless you will now infect you and make you sick. Pre, 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 premature 
uh, predicaments cause problems. It, they cause problems. I don't know about you, but I don't want no pink chicken. If I got pink chicken, we got a problem. As a matter of fact, if you ever go to Wingstop, um, I, I, oftentimes if they're cooking, depending on what wings they're cooking, they need to cook them extra hard, whether it be the hot wings, because I need them to make sure that they're cooked all the way through. I want my meat cooked all the way through. Same thing with pork. You don't half cook no pork. Don't give me no bacon that is still wobbly. I want crispy bacon. I need my bacon to be crispy. Why? Because I need to make sure all them worms and all that, everything that's inside of that, all that bacteria is, and viruses are completely destroyed because what would bless my palate will be, infect my palate if it's not done Right. My, my, might I show you, show you some more examples? A premature baby, um, if they're underdeveloped, it can cause further issues. Uh, ladies, if we, if, we can, if we can really be real, let's, let's really talk about it right now. Uh, um, if, 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 if I'm getting to know my wife in a biblical way, come on, y'all, y'all follow along. Don't be the slow class today. If I'm getting to know my wife in the biblical terms, and I pre, uh, I, I, I prematurely reach my um, I got, um, apex, uh, it can cause some problems. Google it when you get home. It can cause some problems within the relationship. I, I, don't, I don't know a woman that ever wants that to happen on, on her behalf. Uh, we have to take time to allow God to finish the process to get us to where we need, where we can be so we can receive what it is that he has for our lives. Understanding he was in a premature predicament, he now then had to Number two, reestablish his relationship with his father. He had to reestablish the relationship. For number one, premature predicament. Now he has to reestablish the relationship. Reestablish the relationship. Verse 18, if you still got your Bibles open, it says, I will go from the New Living Translation. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you, both heaven and earth. I have sinned against both heaven and you. So what we find out is he's, he's acknowledging, he's accepting accountability for his actions, number three. So he not only premature, he was in a premature predicament, he reestablished his relationship, but he accepted accountability for his actions. Verse 21 goes on to say, and I am no longer worthy of being your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Uh, Psalms 84.10 says, I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. He said, Daddy, listen, I blew it. I need to come back to the house. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before, or if you ever had to tell your your real father that or your real mama that, hey, I messed up. I know I know there's been many times my mama would tell me something and I didn't listen because I had all this infinite wisdom, but in all my infinite stupidity and reality that I really blew it and I had to go back and 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 say, hey, I blew it and I messed up. What I had to essentially do is yield myself you have to yield yourself what do you have to do yield yourself to the father not only are we in a uh, premature predicament we have to reestablish our relationship we have to accept accountability but we have to yield yourself you have to yield yourself to the father yielding means to actually submit unto his will what was his will? He immediately turned his servants, hey, go get him the best robe. Go get him a, a good ring. Let's go get a fattened cow because I am so happy that you are back with me now that, that it doesn't matter what you've done. I just want you to be back in my presence. If anybody with children, they understand this. No matter how bad your kids are, no matter what they did, you still love them. You still uh, want to embrace them. You still want to see them do well. You don't want to see them out on the street struggling. You want to see them doing something prosperous and building and being better than than than. You want to see them being better than they are, they presently are. We must, we, must, we must learn to let go of control and give it all to God. How do you do that? You begin to pray. You begin 
to pray. That's how you're going to overcome that. One more story, and I promise you I'll leave you alone. I was on my way back from Orlando, Florida. We went to, uh, we went to Disney World for my 10-year anniversary, marriage anniversary. I've been married for 10 years. Um, and on the way back um, last month, we got on a plane, and we're riding, um, we're riding in this skinny tube. I realize now, as I'm sitting there, this is just a little skinny tube. It's about half the size of this church, and we're riding at a few hundred miles an hour, and I can appreciate the engineers who paid attention in school. I thank you for that because I did not. Amen? And so now they, their math has to be right because if their math is off, this skinny tube will fall apart and fall out this sky. But that wasn't the problem that we were in this skinny tube flying across the country. The problem was when I heard the captain uh, come across the air and he said, I'm turning back on the, the, uh, the seatbelt sign because we can see that a little um, turbulence. I received word from the, the tower that a little turbulence is on the way. And so we need you, everybody to take their seats and, and buckle up. That was cool. The, the, the flight attendants continued to receive order drinks. They were going up and down. You know how they pass out the little packets of whatever. They give you a little, little water. They give you a little orange juice, whatever it may be, coffee, whatever you need. You hold up a number, and they, they hook you up. Amen? But the problem really came when all of a sudden the, the pilot came over the air, and he said, I need all the flight attendants to take a seat and buckle up because the turbulence that we, we foresee is, is about to get a little worse. So they will continue serving you after we make it through the turbulence. Can I tell you that I began to pray because the way that that plane began to shake so violently began to scare me. I mean, literally, like you're shaking like you're going down a bad road, but we're in the middle of nowhere in the sky. And so I, I began, I'm not going to lie to you, I began to get scared. And I said, God, you're going to you're gonna have to do something. There was strong, strong, violent jolts uh, going everywhere. And I said, God, listen, listen, listen. I got two boys at the house and I just want to go home. All of a sudden, the captain comes back over there and he says, listen, we just received permission from the tower to to go up to 32,000 feet so we can fly over the turbulence. In that moment, I realized three different things. The tower could see what the pilot could not. The tower could see what the pilot could not. Can I suggest to you that our tower is the Holy Spirit? It can see an overview of everything that we cannot see. Therefore, if we're just in tune, if we're connected, if we're in communication with the tower, which is the Holy Spirit, then we can make sure that we're acting in accordance to what it is or the flight plan that he has for our life. It, second thing I realized was the pilot had to ask permission before he made a move. He had to ask permission. He had to make sure that he was in the wheel of the tower. He, in other words, for our lives, we need to start asking God that to ensure that we're in the, his will, not in his per, permissive will, in his perfect will. That's where we really want to be. He got a permissive will. He'll allow you to do some things, but he really wants you to be in his perfect will. We got to stay in tune with God. Why? Because if the pilot would would have acted on his own and began to go up and, and, and went into 32,000 feet and a plane happened to be coming at 32,000 feet directly in our direction, it would have caused a collision. But see, God, he foresaw everything that was going on before. So he makes sure that you're in the right position. Even though you may get close, y'all not going to touch. Why? Because everybody's in their own lane. God is our tower. He's our strong tower. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us. But the thing is, we need to stay within his will. And last thing I realized was that the plane was built with turbulence in mind. He made you to survive whatever you're going through right now. Can I suggest that to you? The, the, the prodigal son, he decided to do his own thing. He didn't want to listen to the tower. He didn't want to listen to the spirit. He wanted to do his own thing. But guess what? God made him with turbulence in mind. 
He understood what he would be doing. Therefore, even though he had to go through different things in his life, God still had him covered. Can I suggest to you today? It does not matter what you've done in your life and how you feel about uh, the, the, the things that have been committed that, that you that have you caused in your life. But God said, no, no, I made you for this. You're going to survive this. We have survived COVID. We, we survived uh, the flu. There's many different things taking people out that you should have probably been dead a long time ago, but had not been for the grace of God who's been covering your life and keeping you this entire of time. You would have been dead and gone. But Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. There's nothing you can say that you you did all you have to do is get in tune with the Holy Spirit listen to the tower and obey the will of God and I guarantee you're gonna you're gonna experience turbulence you're gonna experience uh, bad weather in your life but as long as you hold on you always gonna make it back home if you're lost and confused and if you made some poor decisions if you feel uh, out of control God is saying just come back home That's all I want you to do is come back home. I want you to begin to pray. If you begin to pray, things will change in your life. I guarantee it. You begin to pray and study his word. Things will change. Luckily, by the grace of God, uh, things are about to adjust. God has forced us into a season where we were all online. That's all all we did is online. We couldn't be close to each other. So so we we grew an appreciation for being close to one one another now. And now we we appreciate the opportunity to be able to come back to church. All those who feel safe enough, all those who are vaccinated, all those who are willing to wear a mask, you're more than welcome. We invite you back. We invite you to come back home to the house of God. If you don't feel safe, don't worry about it. We're still going to be online. We're still going to worship with you. We still love you. We're still going to keep connected with you. You send us an email, write us a letter. We still want that interaction with you. But the moment you feel safe, we want you to come back to the house of God because we believe in fellowshipping with one another. Don't worry about your circumstances. As long as you're listening to the tower, as long as you obey the will of God, even though you hit the rough patches of life, you're going to come home. God bless you. Have a great day.